Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to the last Democrat appropriation and budget chief in Oklahoma history. My dad, Representative Mitchell. Chairman Mitchell, happy Father's Day. Love you very much. All right, let's start with Senator Bass. Good to see you. Thank Representative you. Dunnington. Interesting, the petition dealing with the, the rollback of 1010 was in front of the Supreme Court this week. The Supremes usually let these things go on, but there were some questions that might be ominous for the future of them letting this petition go forward. Yeah, there was. And first of all, let me say uh, happy Father's Day to my father, Don Dunnington, this morning, and to my two brothers, uh, Kevin and Darren. Being a father is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me, and it's, uh, it's such a great Sunday to enjoy that. Second of all, this week the uh, Supremes did deal with uh, Senator Coburn's uh, reform to uh, take the 1010 package or the taxes that would pay for the teacher raise off. Um, many of us had thought that the Supreme Court would just kind of put a green light on this and move it forward, but there were so many questions that came up this week from the Supremes on uh, just procedure and how the Coburn Group went uh, about doing this uh, in pretty inappropriate ways. And it'll be interesting to see what they do, but I am still hopeful that they'll uh, pull it off and let that go forward so teachers can get the raises they deserve. Love the digital world. You can actually see what happened in the Supreme Court the other day, like cameras in the courtroom. Senator, what did you think about the questioning? I would agree. The questioning was, I think, pointed. There were a lot of concerns about the repeal of the entire package. Uh, I noticed, I, I watched a little bit of it, and the justices had asked questions about the fact that part of 1010 had already been repealed, which was the hotel motel tax. And when uh, petitioners are asked to sign it, they're really not given a copy of the bill to see what, in fact, they're going to be signing. And I think that's incredibly problematic for voters. And it, it was apparent to me that the Supreme Court was taking that into consideration as they were looking at whether or not to allow this to move forward. We'll see where that goes pretty quickly, I'm sure. Now. Oklahoma doesn't treat women really well in the criminal justice system. We know that. Everybody agrees with that, I hope. This week, Jesse Mitchell did a piece about strangulation of women in Oklahoma. And she talked about the Palomar folks. Strangulation is something that is epidemic in Oklahoma, and we don't talk much about it. In fact, last year, some proponents were for rolling back some of the penalties for people who strangle. This is insane. This has got to stop. What as a policy-making body can be done in the future to stop, or at least start to battle this? Well, first of all, I want to give a shout-out to Palomar. It's an incredible organization that was started in the last year, and they're doing some amazing things. We have to take this seriously. Um, I actually proposed uh, it through the appropriations process this last session to dedicate some funding to domestic violence and sexual assault victims through the AG's uh, office. We have to continue to fight and battle against um, the domestic violence and uh, assault of women in this state. It's out of control. And for women who are in these situations, if your man has put his hands on your throat, he's going to kill you. I mean, that's what the data says. Exactly We've got to do something about this. Yeah. We absolutely have to do something about this. And uh, I appreciate the work that my colleague uh, to the left of me, uh, Senator Bice, has already done on this. Um, it's work that needs to be done. I hope that we continue it next session. Uh, Oklahoma right now ranks fourth in the nation on women that are killed by men. It's one of those, again, glaring statistics that we don't want to be in the top ten on. There's so much that we can do on this, but I want to speak to the fathers this morning because it's Father's Day. Lead by example. You're the ones that when you raise your voice, when you raise your hand at your spouse or your loved one in front of your children, you're teaching them to be the next group of abusers. It's on us to stop this, and we can do it by leading by example and being uh, tender and kind with those that we love. Yeah, I shout out to the Oklahoma Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault for fighting this battle every day. All right, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, which was, would the state question on medical marijuana, state question 788, start swamping some of the other races? It appears that it's what everybody's talking about. It is what everyone's talking about. I was uh, at the barbershop this week, and everyone in the barbershop was talking about state question 788. And it appears that there's still lots of misinformation out there. 788 is uh, a state question that would allow Oklahoma to be the 29th state to have medical marijuana, which would be uh, between a doctor and a patient. It would allow a doctor to prescribe to a patient marijuana as a course of treatment, just like they would any other drug. This doesn't have to have all the fear and consternation that has been created by a lot of different groups. Uh, this is something that so many other states, not only around the country, but around Oklahoma, have already done. It's a no-brainer. We should move forward on state question 788. Now, people think they know what's in it. By the way, when people say everybody knew what was in that bill that you voted, don't, no, they don't. That's not true. You've had some experience in dealing with the change in liquor laws. There's still a lot of work that, regardless of what happens 788 on this issue, 
it still has to go to the legislature for implementation, correct? That's correct. And I think there's a couple of pieces of 788 that give me grave concern. The first one being um, this was drafted by an outside entity, and part of the language states that there's a 30 day implementation period. I spent a year and a half working on alcohol modernization, and it took every bit of that and two years after um, to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So 30 days is not enough time. The second piece of this is they put it under the purview of the Department of Health. Um, as we all know, the Department of Health has its own financial issues, and I don't think they should be given the ability to oversee this um, new uh, drug uh, for the future. We've got to look at uh, making some changes legislatively to ensure that this is done properly. We're talking about the Department, talk about Department of Health implementing this program. We should have sound effects of the car wrecks and train wrecks in the background. So there's going to be a whole lot more done. Hey, speaking of campaign issues, I just want to throw this last one out to you both. We know what we're talking about. We see what the newspapers and the TV stations are talking about. What are people on, on the doorsteps, and you're helping folks with their campaigns, what are they talking about that maybe we're not? Um, I'm actually on the campaign trail right now, and it's, um, it's education first, for sure. Um, we need to address the education issues of the state. Uh, I think the second one is there's a lot of conversations on the doorstep around the gubernatorial race, um, who's going to be uh, come out of that in the runoff. And then state question 788, which is the uh, medical marijuana question. Those are really the three that I have heard the most on the doorstep over the last uh, six weeks or so. And Representative Dunnington, when you're out there, what are people talking about? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I think that Democrats would agree that there need to be some fixes on state question 788, but that's something that we can do at the legislature. So, again, I think we should move forward with the question and then allow the legislature to make those fixes. Out on the campaign trail, I think it's education, education, education. Everyone wants to know, are we going to have the teacher pay raise that we promised this last spring? Is it going to be implemented this fall? And how are we going to continue to uh, retain and recruit new teachers? I mean, we still have 25% of our school districts that are on four-day school weeks, and they're not doing it to save money they're doing it to give teachers that extra day of the week in order to get a second job um, we have to get our, our hands around uh, and deal with education uh, as a policy issue in the state of Oklahoma and quite frankly we haven't gotten there yet so all right so it's gonna be hot and heavy these last 10 days Mitchell talks on Facebook there's nine on Facebook there's nine.com slash your vote counts follow me Scott Mitchell on Twitter because it's gonna be happening